Today's episode is all about remembering things. There are lessons learned all throughout your life, including last season, and we want to remember these things. Stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, leave us a comment of what you want to remember, and enjoy the show. Hey, this is Austin Eckler, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, February 24th, the Fantasy Footballers, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Welcome into the podcast. Welcome into the show. It's good to meet you. <laughs> well, you, somebody out there, they could be meeting us for the very first time today, Mike. That is true. They may know nothing about us, how sophisticated we are. Welcome. Um... This could be their first time. We need to make a good first impression. How do you do that? Well, you dress. You got to dress a little bit. Ah, oh, you're dressed nice today. Most <laughs> days I can make a one-liner about you, but not today. I, I am wearing a hoodie. It's a really and, nice looking hoodie. And the the man in the t-shirt over there. I know. I know. <laughs> That's why it's, I held up with a pig's butt on it. <laughs> well, more than that. Well, well I know. A little Traeger shirt. Yeah, oh. no, I love it. T-shirts forever. Well, you you did um, convert me to the jogger life. Oh yeah, I don't know oh, why. Oh yeah, how did we get to? It's like sweatpants are shameful. Joggers, socially acceptable. Is that well, got a it's, zipper on the pocket? It's not just it's joggers, a, but sweatpants are also also acceptable now. Are they? Oh yes, really? Yeah, in dude, places have, other than Walmart. Yes. Where have you guys been, man? Quarantine and all of this stuff, like. Sweatpants are now fine. Really? Yes. They don't have to have any stylistic. Well, like they a have long to, yeah. zipper with like a special. No, 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 no. I mean, they have to like they have to be a good fit sweatpant. You can't okay. have just like big jinko legs on your sweatpants. But as long as they're as long as it's a good cut and fits, sweatpants are perfectly fine. It's just not going to be possible to go from this level of comfort back to a jean level of discomfort. Totally agree. Yeah, and that's why you need sweatpant jeans. You've been. You've been uh, setting the trend on this for a while. Look, Jason, are you in on the jogger life? Oh, no. He doesn't no, wear no. pants. I was oh, going to say, right. I would. do you know how much I would sweat if I had sweatpants on? It's in the name. I'm sweating in khaki shorts and, <laughs> and boxers I could sweat. I, I'm not putting on sweatpants. You insane? You should have seen how upset Jason was. He got in from a workout. Oh, yeah. Tried to wait a while to shower. Showers in as cold of water as I guess he can tolerate. Gets out and sweats. I'm just sweat. Uh, I'm just still sweating forever. But it's a clean sweat. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's still salty. Uh, what? No, no. It's it's still it's clean though because the bacteria is off your body. We help. well sure, but I I still feel like when I am sweating after a shower and I have to put on a shirt, it feels wrong. Sure, it feels like I need to hop back in the shower. You real need quick. one of those walk-in deep freezers. Yes, we do. We need like one of those. What, like Rocky? Like so you can fridge. go, you can go train and beat up on the like the can, one they hide the from the dinosaurs meat. from in Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. I would yeah. be all about working out in a in a refrigerator. Oh my gosh, we have. How's that for a first impression? <laughs> first and last. <laughs> Welcome if to the football show. If you're still here, uh, it's a late February podcast, and we actually have, I think. One of our more helpful shows of the off season here today. We're doing our ten things to remember episode. So we've each picked out some things reflecting on the past year. Yeah, and I, uh, every single year we add a few really valuable nuggets that actually make an impact on how we go moving forward into future seasons of fantasy football. I, I would say this show every single year has certainly made me. And hopefully others, a better fantasy player. And one of Mike's 10 things to remember really shows why this show is important, which is evolution, right? Like the, the actual, sure. the, the fantasy football universe, the types of leagues people play in, the things they pay attention to, the access to different information, 
you do you can't just settle in a rut and do the same thing year after year. You do have to adjust. The game evolves. And I think we've all picked out some things that we want to do better in our own fantasy leagues next year. So we'll be counting it down, 10 things to remember, but let's kick it off with a quick question. This one came in from Instagram. Which second-year player is set for the biggest jump in fantasy football production? We were banned from selecting Travis Etienne, who missed his entire rookie season. Makes sense. Yeah, that, that one doesn't fit the mold, right? Zero to anything would be a nice jump. It's a big jump, jump yeah. yeah. So, well, I'll, I'll hop in here. Mine does deal with a little bit of injury, but I think – uh, it's more than that. The talent that we saw from this player on the field was outstanding. He's paired to a quarterback who can also take a year two leap. I'm talking about Elijah Moore, last year's rookie wide receiver for the New York Jets. From weeks nine through 13, he was the wide receiver two in fantasy football. He was utterly dominant. This was a player who you saw that kind of uh, electric quick, titch, quick twitch ability um, on the field, that's why they drafted him. That's what they were hoping they that would translate, and then it did. He was awesome. Mm -hmm. Obviously, injury got in the way, um, and you know he was also I I still think limited uh, by Zach Wilson. You know, so coming into year two, the fact that he is now entry, he's going from a place where he was an incoming hopeful rookie behind a Jamison Crowder, and they had just paid big money for. Uh, Corey, Corey Davis, Davis and like so he was an afterthought coming into this season he is now the dude he is who they are seeing as like their primary wide receiver of the future paired to their quarterback that they hope of the future so I think Elijah Moore is someone who will take a major step up um, and I'll I'll just jump in because that's that's the same name that came to my uh, head as well I mean he's top tier in targets per route run so which if you're new to that statistic, it's essentially when the player is out there running a route, how often are they targeted? Because you have several wide receivers. When you go look at the snap counts, you're like, well, that that guy was out there for 90-plus percent of the snaps and never gets targeted. Elijah Moore, 24% of his routes, he was targeted. And that is a top-tier percentage. Now, of course, he missed uh, you know a lot of games, but that's still a tremendous uh, rate at which he is seeing the ball. And of players with 24% of a targets per route run, he has the third, or I should say tied for, the third highest average depth of target. So these aren't cheapies. Like, aren't Rondale Ron, Moore. Like Rondale Moore, this who's, is Elijah Moore. Who's a dot is like 1.3 or something just obscene that football has never seen before. Can we get but rid of Cliff if, Kingsbury already? If you, th <laughs> if you think Elijah Moore is small, you should see Rondale Moore. Yeah, but the, but the point is the ball is going to him. It's... He is getting deep down the field. He has elite athleticism. If Zach Wilson truly can take a step that the Jets believe he can, he was the second overall pick selected before a lot of the other quarterbacks in this, in last year's draft. Elijah Moore is really set up to make a big fantasy jump. The name I'll throw out there then, since you guys were in agreement, I'll throw Josh Palmer out there, who was a rookie wide receiver for the uh, Los Angeles Chargers last season, third-round pick. I believe Elijah Moore was second round pick, thirty fourth overall. Yes, Palmer went. Uh, Palmer was a surprising pick, seventy seventh overall. Um, this is about what I think we saw in the field from Josh Palmer in limited, kind of towards the end of the year. Uh, he had, over the final five games, he averaged sixty five percent of snaps, saw five point six targets, caught three touchdowns. But it's opportunity mixed with that talent. Um, I like the size. I like what I saw in the field. I think he is a player that's going to work very hard to take the next step at the NFL level. And Big Mike, Mike Williams, if he were to depart, he's a oh, free agent, man. which I think the likelihood is it's, it's better than 50% that he leaves because of what's out there at the wide receiver position. And so you see players that, you know, I don't think any of us would say Mike Williams is a tier one NFL wide receiver. No, but he's a tier one NFL free agent. Yeah, and so he gets, you know, sometimes you see these players get paid a tier higher on years where wide receiver depth at the free agent, you know, market isn't there. So I think there's a chance Mike Williams goes in, you know, he could go get the bag from a New York Jets, to be honest with you, or go get it from the Bears who need desperately yes. to find a, a weapon. So if Josh Palmer is put into 
that outside role on a regular basis. We know what the, the Keenan Allen show is all about, right? We've seen a lot of episodes. It's not changing. We're in the reruns at this point, it's and great they're show. great. It's I a, love that show. There's some classic episodes, no doubt about it, but he's not going to be a downfield, um, heavy touchdown threat. And, and yeah, Simpsons aren't changing. No. <laughs> the formula is well established. But, but you could have a new major character here in, in Josh Palmer where – you know the production levels of Justin Herbert are going to persist in the passing game with this head coach and this offense for years to come. So who's going to be the guy? And it seems like Josh Palmer is ready and able. Maybe that maybe they sign somebody and it, it makes it messier. But I think Josh Palmer is somebody to watch out for, somebody that has an opportunity. All right, a couple of reminders for you before we get into the countdown of the 10 things to remember for the upcoming year. Jointhefoot.com. That is our fantasy football community. If you would like a bonus episode of the show. Bonus. Thank you, Mike. Uh, You're welcome. That's enough. That's enough. No, if you want an extra episode of this show, we're, we're down to two a week in the off season. So you want a bonus third episode. We have a lot of fun over there. You can check out jointhefoot.com. And then if you want to pre-order the draft kit, you can do that at ultimatedraftkit.com. If you get in there before March 10th, we will give you an opportunity to win a listener league spot and you will get it at the lowest possible price. And you get instant access to the Dynasty Pass. All our rookie and Dynasty information is in there right now. News and notes from around the league. Are we just playing into Aaron Rodgers' hands if we, if, if we yeah, talk about him? a little bit. Yeah. All right, so no real news on Rodgers. Yeah, he says he's That's not going to. That's the gonna, news. His news. Nah. Everyone was waiting for him to go on the Pat McAfee show, McAfee, and um, and then he comes out and says, I'm not making a decision right now. He wants to make a decision soon, though. Um, it's reported that he wants to do that in part for Devontae Adams and him knowing his future as a free agent, what he should be doing, signing, not signing, etc. And their GM said he's doubtful to field trade offers for Jordan Love. Uh, okay. Did you hear about his cleanse, though? What? Oh, yeah. Who are you talking about? Jordan Aaron Rod no, Aaron Rodgers. You didn't You didn't hear the news about the cleanse? Oh, I didn't. They'll give it to me. The 12-day, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but Panchakarma mm. sounds cleanse right. sounds right. includes things like therapeutic vomiting. and. Oh, yeah. He did his research. Yeah. No, okay. he's it, he, critical thinking. All right. And, uh, a, and a lot of Rhea from both sides. Oh, Jeremy man. Fowler said many around the league – Expect Jameis Winston back as the starting quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. He's their best option. I mean, he really... At this point, yes. They, quarterbacks aren't growing on trees out there. It's also, what is, like, what, what do you do with Taysom Hill Did then? Did you say vomiting? Oh, yeah. Vomiting's a part of no, it? No, no, but therapeutic. Yeah, thank you, Mike. This isn't just <laughs> normal throwing up. Yeah. Therapeutic? This is... Yes, yes. There it is. Therapeutic. We got it. <laughs> You're welcome. Well done. Uh, Jarvis Landry said... Copyright. Put the... <laughs> Get the domain. Get the dot .com quick. I declare. Uh, Jarvis Landry said he has put the ball in the Browns' court in terms of his future. It, it The implications out there are that they asked him to take a pay cut. So now the ball is in their court to not do that or to extend him or to reconfigure his salary. Um, they can save nearly $15 million if they cut him. Yeah, he had a five-year, $75 million uh, contract, of which he's on the final year. 16 million on the books, only one and a half dead cap. So he either will take, I don't, it sounds like he doesn't want to take a pay cut. Um, and so it's tough to imagine the Browns being able to cut him. Like they'll save a lot of money, but also they, they do need wide receivers. Like right. they, uh, this is not a, uh, a, a place, who, you know, they shipped Odell Beckham out. So if Jarvis Landry gets cut, which financially makes a lot of sense, what is left there? I mean, they're going to be uh, drafting someone, signing someone, but the free agent market is terrible. So Donovan Peoples-Jones is still there. Anthony Schwartz. Yeah. Exactly. He, Schwartz flashed a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah so did, did. Peoples-Jones. Yeah, but they're not like – I don't think there's a budding number one, right? <laughs> I think Land two. Landry's playing this the way he should. He's 29 years old. He yes. could, if he gets cut – he gets another deal that's going to be in excess of a reconfigured deal here, probably. And he can go to somewhere where he can win. Yes. And if he doesn't get cut, then he gets paid a lot. So, 
I don't think we have any other news, Brooksy. Did did you get any information on this Aaron Rodgers plan, health plan? This is plant man stuff, or this goes beyond the plants. Yeah. Well, now we're now we're reading about butt oil. There's butt mm. oil involved. Yeah. I don't know if we should be talking about this. <laughs> this, is some, this is really not safe for work. This whole first impression thing is going sideways. <laughs> I have no comment. No um, comment. You uh, haven't tried we'll it out? A, we'll get a rumpologist in here. Yeah, I knew that was coming. <laughs> Figure that out. All right, let's move on. Don't forget to remember these things. Oh, baby. Yeah, nice one, Mike. Very good. Uh, we have 10 things to remember from 2021. Things to, uh, I think, lessons we've learned. Things we want to commit to memory. As we have a long off season here before kick And just some things you want to remind yourself Absolutely. of. It's like, look, fool me once, fool me twice situation, except we're fantasy football players, we're human beings, <laughs> guilty as charged. I've fallen into the same trap several times. So that's, this is a good episode where you look in the mirror and remind yourself, I got to stop falling for this. Okay, so Jason, you have number uh, number 10. Number 10. Yeah, and this is actually a really nice segue from what Mike was talking about because this was something where at the very beginning of the fantasy season, after the draft season, I had this question to myself because I felt like I kept making the same mistake over and over and over. And so I wrote down a list of players. I call this one Hurt Don't Help. Okay. Hurt Don't Help because I wrote down a list of all the players who were relevant, drafted, fantasy guys that you actually might have liked who basically missed all of preseason, all of training camp. They basically just weren't – they were told, oh, he's going to be ready to go for the season. So people are drafting these guys, but they they hadn't been playing. They hadn't been practicing. And so I, I remember going to Brooks, and we came up with a, a list together of, like, who is it that, that you know, I, I want to look at the end of the season and remind myself, are those players good to draft, bad to draft, irrelevant, a mixture – and my takeaway is avoid the players who miss all of preseason or training camp due to injury. Now, in hindsight, this will sound really obvious, but I wrote this down then because it was not. These were players. I loved Curtis Samuel. You get an injury dip discount as well. Absolutely. That's what's so enticing. It is enticing. And so there were seven players that I wrote down. Um, uh, Curtis Samuel was one complete L, just abs never got healthy the whole entire season, even though they said he's going to be good to go for the season. Saquon Barkley was one of the players that basically was, he's going to be ready to go, but he was coming off of the injury. Off, awful draft pick, complete lost season. Kenny Galladay, Oof. rough, ouch, just, I mean, he, worse than the other two, if you could even be worse than Curtis Samuel and Saquon. Odell Beckham who was a complete loss before the change to, you know, obviously late in the season goes to the Super Bowl champion Rams and did have a little bit of fantasy relevance. Um, Amari Cooper was mostly an L on the season, never really looked great. And then the two other guys on the list who were good, Marquise Brown and DeAndre Swift, they missed, you know, the whole lead up to the season. <clears throat> but um, they were... They struggled, obviously, with injury at the end of the year. They, you know, had a, a hot stretch, but then both uh, basically became irrelevant sure. at the end. I'd so, throw out Michael Thomas as well. Sure. I, yeah, I guess I, I didn't even think of him because he was set to miss a chunk of the season coming in. But these guys who... Yeah, but people drafted him. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. People drafted him because of that dip. They think, well, if he's going down to round... He was like eight. round yes. You know, I, how can you how can you not grab Michael Thomas in round eight? And so this is one of those things where I want to remember this for next year because a couple of these players, Amari Cooper and Curtis Samuel, I loved in the off season. And coming up this coming season, I am going to employ a remove these type of players from my list entirely. I will not draft these guys who miss all of camp, all of preseason, even if they say they're good to go on week one. Number nine. All right, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with this one titled "Plumb the Depths." Plumb it. Plumb the depths. Uh, more than ever before. Plum's a good word. It is. Yeah. I, <laughs> also delicious. Look, plums. You like yeah. plums? 
Plums I'm, are good. They're they're a little underrated. It's very hard. I, they, they're the same as prunes, right? Prunes are a no, dried what? out plum, right? Well, yeah. What? Yeah, a prune is to plum like a, a raisin is to grape. You didn't know this, Jason? No, I didn't know that because one is good and one is you awful. You don't like prunes. No. Are you sure you don't? Well, I'm not. <laughs> let me let me check my age. Yeah, not eighty. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like you, you right now, I think you have an age bias going on, saying that that prunes are bad because yeah. they're for old people. That's yes, I do. That is guilty as charged. <laughs> but plums are for for young folk. That's right. They're delicious when ripe. Go on in. I wish I had named this differently. Let's talk about let's talk, let's talk about is, these plums. This is a reminder. the depth. This is a reminder <laughs> about. The importance of depth in fantasy football more than ever. You got a 17 game season now, right? So you even have another full week. Maybe we'll get another one after that where you cannot, and I have to remember this, you cannot rely on that frame worthy starting lineup that you've assembled, that idealistic, starter centric, beautiful, f- amazing roster that you put together that you think is going to make it through the year. Look, you only had three. Running backs out of the top 15 that played all 17 games this year, Jonathan Taylor, Najee, and uh, Zeke. Your championship winners were players like Rashad Penny, who you guys rode to a championship. Braxton Berrios, who Kyle should have rode to a championship. <laughs> oh. Sonny Michelle, oh. Daryl Williams, Amon Ross St. Brown, Jarrett Patterson, Keyshawn Vaughn. Look, you have to remember uh, to stash and spend on fab early when you don't need to because what can happen is you might have the best draft of your life you might have made the best trade of your life early in the year but that can cause you to be over attached to a starting lineup thereby making you slow to make moves to pay for depth look depth on your fantasy roster exists to answer the question what do i do now before you have to ask it before the crisis. So I think for me, I want to remember to act like my team is in crisis before it is because sure. it will be at some point in time unless I'm the luckiest fantasy player of all time. I mean, I had I was the team that had the the rug pulled out for me with Derrick Henry, right? This catastrophic linchpin of your roster. And more often than not, fantasy players are going to have that happen to them. But if you prepare yourself, if you spend early, if you don't have a two, three week delay because you're looking at how beautiful your lineup is or how well put together it is, you're going to be in a better position because that delay can cost you. You might not have been willing to spend on Elijah Mitchell early in the year, right? You don't have that catastrophic injury yet. You don't go spend on Elijah Mitchell. And that could have been the player that would have helped you through crisis on your team. So prune the depths, plumb the depths, whatever you want to call it. (laughs) Pay attention to depth before you need it. Number eight. All right, I'm calling this one the late round adjustment. And hold on, because this is going to be a string of names, but just try and follow along. Mahomes, Allen, Murray, Lamar, Wilson, Dak, Rogers, Herbert, Brady, Stafford, Tanny, and Jalen Hurts. Tanny being Ryan Tannehill, of course. Those were the top 12 quarterbacks uh, in ADP this past offseason for so average for the draft, draft position. Yes, that's how, that's how by the end of it, the average of where those guys were being selected. That was the order. And here are the top 12 finishers at the quarterback position. Allen, Herbert, Brady, Mahomes, Stafford, Rogers, Dak, Burrow, Hurts, Murray, Cousins, Tannehill. 11 of the 12 quarterbacks that were drafted first in fantasy football drafts finished inside the top 12. Joe Burrow was the only player who slipped in, which... It, it makes sense. Burrow had the, the catastrophic knee injury. His ADP slipped a little bit. You weren't sure if he was ready to go. I I understand what happened there. But my point is the late round quarterback philosophy has been a staple of uh, not only this show, but of good fantasy football players out there for a long time. We have understood that the quarterback is, generally speaking, is a replaceable position. You only have to play one of them. If you're in a 12-team league, that means only 12 of them are being played at any moment, and there's just there's guys readily available on the waiver wire that you could pick up and throw in. And you can also, on top of that, get quarterbacks later, realizing the upside that a rushing quarterback provides you uh, balancing out because you get a point for every 10 yards. And so it doesn't matter if they're a great passer. Just, this is fantasy football. It's not real-life NFL. It's a completely different game. 
but drafters are getting sharper. And there really wasn't a huge edge. Like Josh Allen had the slight edge of being the best quarterback, and you had to pay up for him. He was, you know, QB two drafted at the back of the third or so in uh in single quarterback leagues. But got like Brady, Murray, Mahomes, Hurts, Lamar, these guys are within two points per game of each other. There was not really an edge. So instead of the game being I'm going to wait as late as possible, I'm I'm proposing we may need we need to reevaluate. When do you go in on getting that quarterback? It's it's not just wait till the very end because all the name quarterbacks are going to get drafted and then I'll I'll figure out who the diamond in the rough is and I will get them and and if it doesn't work out I'll just stream my way there. We have to adjust with the crowd. The crowd is getting better and better at fantasy football. That's why you listener, you're doing the right thing. You're you're listening to a fantasy football podcast in February. You're keeping sharp. You're the iron is sharpening the iron through the off season, making sure you're still plugged in. So this is a reminder that the game evolves, your strategies need to evolve, and we will be doing that as well. It's not just automatically, well, I don't want this quarterback in the seventh because I'm going to get this guy in the ninth. Like We have to reevaluate the whole process as the, as the edge slips away. Okay, and that's something I think this is a reminder now I think it's an awareness thing of of understanding how they finish compared to like people projected the top twelve quarterbacks. That's what yeah, happened. We did not the order perfectly right, but they projected there wasn't three guys that snuck in that you got that you streamed your way there. Yeah, yeah and five years ago it was always it was look super at the, look easy. at the top five guys. They were all drafted late. We were wrong. We're just we're, we're genius now. <laughs> Do you talk speaking for the community? Oh sure, I was talking about just the three. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, Good work, Chase. So I think this is something that'll get worked out over this off season too, as we start looking at the initial yep. lists of quarterbacks. Number seven. Speaking of quarterbacks, I call this one quarter blacks okay. because new quarterbacks who bring hope and positive narratives to these tr teams, but they are retreads. They don't move the needle for the receiving court, and I want to desperately remember this. Happens every year, and I was hook, line, and sinker on a couple of these. I fell for it. Not going to do it next year. Here's the three situations to bring up. Carolina, they traded for a bright young hope in Sam Darnold. There was the getting a, a, away from Adam Gase narrative, the youth of Sam Darnold, the receiving core that he had. Um, the, the, the offensive system, like there was so much positivity there. DJ Moore could finally, <laughs> murder. uh, yeah, Ja Rule was there. DJ Moore could finally become a superstar. Robbie Anderson, they paid him a lot of money. He was going to be a great value for fantasy. Terrace Marshall Jr., the new hotness, uh, you know, one of the most touted rookie wide receivers. It turns out Sam Darnold wasn't the answer that the publicity said he was. Denver, on the other hand, they finally got rid of Drew Locke. They, they took Carolina's. That was the rough. super ironic part, right? They got Teddy Bridgewater, who Carolina just got rid of. Carolina's like, oh, good, we don't have Teddy Bridgewater. And now in Denver, somehow all the PR was spun to where it was, it was positive. It was good. Now we've just got a solid veteran, not Drew Locke, that's going to be so good for our superstar receiving core of Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy and Noah Fant. This is going to really work out. It turns out Teddy Bridgewater wasn't the answer for those wide receivers, and the wide receivers on both of those destinations really disappointed. Same thing happened with uh, the Washington football team. Now, they brought in Fitzmagic. He got injured, but even Taylor Heineke. He was touted as being so much better than the Dwayne Haskins and old broken version of Alex Smith, and and he, he was better. But it turns out Taylor Heineke is not the answer. Terry McLaurin... You know, he wasn't that great for fantasy. No, these, these guys all disappointed. And so for 2022, we will have all of these positive narratives, all of the bright, shiny hope. Jimmy Garoppolo is going to go somewhere. 
and he's going to be the answer for that team, publicity-wise, narrative-wise. He's going to be a, a, a great hope. Mitchell Trubisky might be re-signed somewhere, and, and he's, he's trained with Brian Dable and Josh Allen. He's supported Allen Robinson. There will be positive narratives. Jameis Winston is coming back. Well, he's been successful for fantasy. Carson Wentz might end up on a new team. These dudes will not be the answer for the wide receivers you're hoping take that major, major jump up, and I will not fall for it this year. Now, obviously, if Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, and I would I would throw Kirk Cousins in as I'm saying this now before any he's, publicity and any proven. move. Yeah, he's proven he could support. Uh, he's also uh, actually left the team and then gone to another one and done well. Right, exactly. So those guys – Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Kirk Cousins. Yes, I'll get excited about the receiving core. Any other wide quarterback change, and they all be coming, not going to fool me this year. Not happening. Not going to get you? Not going to get me. You're all quarterbacks. What if Sam Darnold goes to a new team? Well, well I mean, he, he, can't <laughs> fail. he can't fail for three teams, can he? How disappointed are you in the Sam Darnold outcome? I'm... I'm pretty disappointed because I think it would have been fun to have him be good. Um, I yeah, always we were prefer. For him. Yeah, I mean, if if every but he's single <laughs> yeah, if every single team had a great quarterback, things would be even better for fantasy. But uh, there aren't 32 okay. great quarterbacks. Number six. All right, I'm gonna call this one. Proof was in the pudding. Mm, delicious, you and your food today. Yeah. So look, there are players. Wait, you're so pudding. Oh gosh, pudding is good. Okay. Tapioca for 80-year-olds. Oh, oh yeah. so tapioca. That's right. That's where you draw the line? That's absolutely right. Yeah. Never again, Brooks. Proof was in the tapioca. I'm not naming these after <laughs> food ever again on this show. Proof was in the pudding. What do I mean? There were there are players in fantasy football um, that we hope. There are players in fantasy football that we hope make the leap every year, right? That's kind of the diamond in the rough. Find the Terry McLaurin going into the top five or the DJ Moore going into the top five. And then there are players who have already done it. They've already made the leap, and then they've had regression for whatever reason the case may be. I want to remember to buy into some of the players who have seen regression, who have had a bad year, maybe even they've struggled with injuries, because they have proven via on-the-field evidence that they can produce at league-winning fantasy football levels. Because in this past year, we saw multiple players who had previously dominated in fantasy football in different stretches of their career who were then considered middle-tier options going into this past year's draft. Cooper Cup, late fourth-round pick, the wide receiver 19, but we had seen it on the field in stretches before. Debo Samuel, late seventh-round pick, the wide receiver 36 off the board, but we had seen him produce in stretches while healthy on the field. Three other names to bring up. Leonard Fournette was an eighth-round pick. James Conner was an eighth-round pick. Mark Andrews was a fifth-round pick. They were all players that you've seen stretches of elite performance on the field. There are Look, it's exciting to hope a player can do that, but it's also something to have done it. And so the proof was in the pudding for these guys, and I want to remember to take a few chances on those type of players. Maybe even Adam Thielen fits that mold. You know, there are players in the middle rounds that we ignored this year and that had the potential based on their previous evidence that they could do it. It's ironic you say that because it's actually potential that is the problem. They they don't seem like they have potential. You've already seen it. And it's for some reason, we don't want that. We want the potential that we haven't seen that seems wrongly like that is going to it's, be the it's best the family guy clip of you could have a boat or you can have what's in the box. And he's like, well, hold on, hold on. <laughs> it could, it could be a boat. <laughs> You're like, yeah, but you got a boat. Yeah. Right. And so but it's box. it is boring. Like it, it, there's no more boring pick this year than Leonard Fournette. Oh, that the, seemed like just, I mean, he probably likes prunes. That was the viewpoint <laughs> on Leonard Fournette, even though he's not very old, the viewpoint he's was in like, plum age. Yeah. So, there are opportunities there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna lean a little bit on evidence that we've seen for some of these guys. Yeah, it's so sometimes we outthink ourselves. The you look at all these advanced statistics, and we dig as deep as we can to find the diamonds and all the rough statistics. But the reality is, the greatest indicator of future success, yep. 
is previous success. So, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to try to remember that going into 2022. Number five. Call this one rookie QBs give wide receivers the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> okay. Jason doesn't have any I, commentary I, on that one. Well, uh, there was no food involved. You like jujubes? No. No. Oh, okay. Go on, Mike. I just, you know, sort of. There was a rhyme. Yeah. yeah. It's, no, I mean, it's in there somewhere. That's. I mean, you, you were the last one to come up with your names. I don't hold it against you. Since 2004, 70% of the time a rookie quarterback fails to produce a top 36 wide receiver. That single like, sentence is, end of, is yeah. very powerful. Full stop. Number four. Say it one more time. <laughs> Since 2004, a rookie quarterback fails to produce a top 36 wide receiver 70% of the time. Top 36 isn't even that great. Correct. And we can look at this last year. Let's let's get more oh, specific no. about it. Because last year, that was – if you're newer to football, like say you've only like been diving in the last handful of years or so, that was an outrageously touted quarterback class. Like the first three picks were quarterbacks. There's always it, usually a quarterback in the top ten, sometimes two, but for the first three picks to be a quarterback, and then you had uh, Justin Fields and Mac Jones in. I think they were both top fifteen picks. I don't remember where Mac ended up. Yeah, Mac was, was like 15. twelve. I think. Oh, but, was it fifteen? Okay. But this was an outrageously touted quarterback class. Of this is. This is the new crop that will set the standard moving forward as we lose Rivers and Brady and, and Rodgers. These players, these are going to be the guys that step up. Well, in Jacksonville, Marvin Jones finished as the wide receiver 34. So, I mean, he made it in the threshold. While LaVisca Chenault on that team had the worst season ever for someone who's seen 95 or more targets. It Looking at the analytics and metrics of LaVisca Chenault, he breaks all math of how bad it was. In New England, Jacoby Myers, supposed to be a PPR machine, born in Aguilar, high-value high free agents. Meh. Elijah Moore was the one who flashed. In which, with a rookie quarterback. With a rookie quarterback. So like that gives me even more confidence that Elijah Moore is about to break out and, and be the real deal. In Chicago, Allen Robinson vanished into absolute nothingness. Darnell Mooney flashed, but when you go back and really look, the majority of his big games... It wasn't actually Justin Fields who was the quarterback. He was hurt at the time. Brandon Cooks here and there with Davis Mills in Houston, but they just – the rookie quarterbacks are alluring. They're new. It's the new shiny toy. What can someone do with this player? But you just have to So let me set remember. the table then. Okay, go. A place like uh, uh, Carolina. A right. place like Washington. Those have – they have yeah. – it, it, it's not like we're complete fools. It's generally a situation where you have a player that you love or you really, sure. really like. Maybe it's D Denver with Judy or McLaurin in Washington or DJ Moore in Carolina. There's always an alluring fantasy option at the wide receiver position that tempts you. And everyone, every fantasy player at a certain point has value. So that it's just it comes down to your opportunity cost. So we be informed and be judicious when you're going in on these wide receivers in the draft of realizing just because it's a rookie quarterback, or I should say because it's a rookie quarterback, the, Your like, are low. the likelihood that this player is that you had the hope for is going to actually take the leap to be a superstar. It's very low because they just, they aren't, they aren't good for fantasy football because they're rookies. They're just learning how to play in the NFL. I'm curious now that you brought up those numbers, what like a, a last third of the year looks like for some of those players sure. versus the whole year. Because, you know, if, if for example, Trevor Lawrence got it going in the back half, maybe Marvin Jones is relevant then. But Elijah, that Moore, acclimation, Elijah Moore yeah, is Elijah later Moore. in the season. Yes, and that definitely can happen. And the, an issue we get is outliers pop up. Justin Herbert came, uh, put his Superman cape on, and supported Keenan Allen and was like was fantastic as a rookie, had good options around him. And then you think, well, Justin Herbert did it. Mm -hmm. So all these other guys can do it. And it's the, the he is the outlier. He is not the standard. You said seventy percent fails. Yes. That means thirty percent do produce a top thirty six. 
But do you want to bet on the yeah. seventy or bet on the thirty? You you take you that's a that's an easy bet. Yeah, and there's a lot of situations where it's not even the quarterback's fault, right? As a rookie, you are protecting a rookie. Sure, you know the coach is it's protecting. It's all part of it. So like Herbert had this ability; they gave him carte blanche to just like chuck it as a rookie, which is rare. Like Mac Jones is Justin Fields. I mean, Justin Fields, we kept begging them to let yes. him throw the football. So. um that's a it's an interesting thing and something we should remember because that is a bad bet early in drafts to go the thirty percent route on somebody you think you really need and somebody and that's, that could be fantasy important. football is a game of numbers. If like we you had, were playing probability and range of outcomes. We had thought about this going into last year. Allen Robinson is the perfect name. Yeah. To say let's move him down five or six spots. We probably will not get him because other people will draft him ahead of us because of the we all like Justin Fields. Mm. Like I, we all were yes. uh, he was believers. Such a trap too, with and, how bad his quarterbacks had been. Yeah, and so Robinson. I, yeah, 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 that was why people liked it. But that would have been a a perfect tip to help avoid the biggest trap in fantasy this year. Number four, I call this one <laughs> tight ends. More like loose stools. <laughs> there's got them. There's that first impression. Yeah, you're welcome. Still going. Oh, they're not here. They're <laughs> oh, not. I here. liked it. Um, well, they, they've already yeah, left. These are our people now, Mike. Um, <laughs> here's the reality: tight ends still suck, and tight ends are always yeah. going to suck. Draft one early. That's my big takeaway here. T.J. Hawkinson was good. He was like a win this year, and he sucked. <laughs> right? Like, like he he was good. Painful to roster, but painful to roster. Um, Dallas Goddard this last year, man, he was going to be so good if. Oh no! Zach Ertz came back to the team. He was gonna just—he was gonna take off. Oh wait! Then Zach Ertz left. Dallas Goddard still sucked. I, I, no offense. We was gonna hit that th third-year leap. He's an athletic freak. His profile's off the charts. He sucked. <laughs> oh, but Higby. Some Higby strong language. Higby yeah. going to Hig beast without Gerald Everett there. They're gonna throw to uh, Higby sucked. <laughs> Robert Tunyon, he broke out, and he's playing with the MVP of the league who can keep up that touchdown pace. That's true. Robert Tunyon sucked. Oh, man. Gasicki, Janu, Ingram, everyone sucked, just <laughs> like every single year. Tight ends suck. You're they all so suck. so mean. Well, but yeah, that's, not, that's not on me. <laughs> that's on the tight ends. <laughs> oh, come on. Or should I call them loose right. stools? So, look, draft Kelsey, draft Mark Andrews. If you want to try Pitts or Kittle, sure. All the other guys, they're going to suck. So draft a tight end early or just punt. Punt forever. Agreed. Just, just don't don't draft these middle tight ends. They're all going to suck. I feel like the joke is loose caboose. Yeah, I, I get it. Because, but loose caboose. Like you're making a butt joke into a poop joke. Well, mm. You can't see the leap to I get know. from a butt Joke to a poop joke. I'm just trying. I'm helping one. You, you literally comes out of the other. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying it's it's pretty on the nose. How we doing, producers? <laughs> you guys still proud of uh, working here? Oh, I yeah. am. Yeah, <laughs> my <Okay>. mom's not. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's uh, that's uh, understandable. Number three. All right, I'm gonna call this new laundry new problems. What's your favorite detergent? Oh gosh, Tide. You're a Tide man. Yeah. Do you use the the pods? Yeah, the, the pods. pods the, the, the pods are delicious. <laughs> Del oh, they we're no, back to eating. No, 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 no. Don't no, eat the no, pods. No, 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 no. We they, know our audience. They would eat the pods. <laughs> they look delicious, though. Kyle, you probably yeah. He's nodding. He's eaten some pods before. <laughs> don't eat them. They do look delicious. Yeah, yeah stop. Don't do it. That's, uh, that's their fault. I can't name these anymore. That's the <laughs> truth. New laundry, new problems. I'm talking about. Crafting a narrative as to why a free agent pickup will always work in their new destination because the narrative writes itself, right? That, when you are signed to a new team, guess what? They wanted you. That's built into it. So that's part of the narrative. They were pursued. They were chosen by that team. They were given money. They were given capital. The local fans are excited. They're buying the jerseys. It's all built into changing teams, putting on the new laundry. Well, here were the 2021 free agents who changed teams with the most money by position. The running backs, Kenyon Drake, Jamal Williams, Mike Davis. <laughs> Wide receivers were Galladay, Corey Davis, <laughs> Curtis Samuel, Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, Marvin Jones, Will Fuller, A.J. Green. A.J. Green was the best of that group. 
That is accurate. Man, the free agents got hurt. Tight ends, Johnny Smith, Hunter Henry, Kyle Rudolph. Look, it rarely works, and you hope it will work, and you can write the story as to why you think it will work. You're stuck in that reality. But guess what? Every single free agent signing has zero snaps with their new offense, zero rapport with their coaches. They've moved their families to a new home. They've got a new routine, and they're signed without your fantasy team considered whatsoever. You know, I think John New Smith might have been the best example of this. Paid a bunch of money. Immediately. And I know that there's NFL criticism for the signing, but the plan for John New Smith wasn't built out of your fantasy production. It was built on the other things he can do on the field, running these two tight end sets. It's more more often than not, and we've said it a little bit, especially with wide receivers. We're like, eh, just don't paint too rosy a picture because it just doesn't work out that often. But this year really showed across all positions that like the rose-colored glasses, they just didn't produce any fantasy production. So please temper that story that is being told and it might take time on a new team it might never happen on a new team because the roles are just they they're changed yeah when mike williams signs a 70 million dollar deal yep this offseason and to be the dude now he's not going to be in keenan allen's shadow it's probably not going to be an upgrade for him yeah yeah, and it's it it definitely and like Mike said, you, everybody has a price in the draft, mm -hmm. but it's probably not going to be the price that people are paying. Like he's not going to produce up to that ADP level. Number two, take something for that rookie fever, because this is a reminder. If you are new to the game, what Jamar Chase just did and what Justin Jefferson did a year ago, that is not normal. Those. You Those, can't stop me, Mike. I I'm know. going in. And rookies are fun. like we're in this. We're in dynasty time. Like I am. We're watching the tape. Like Burks, I'm watching Burks in college. I'm going, man. This this dude's going to be an absolute stud. But you got to try and pull it back, calm down, and remember the odds of these players turning into real difference makers. It is low. They, now, you're talking receivers. Rookie wide, yes. Okay. Thank you. Rookie wide receivers. Running backs, they go yeah, right in. Yeah, outstanding. But rookie wide receivers, and this is an ADP. This is draft re related. Everyone has their value at certain points in the draft, but don't get out of control. Looking back at rookie wide receivers drafted in the first round, this is all the way back to 2002, 77. 77 wide receivers drafted in the first round. Four of them were top 12 wide receivers. Now, it's been in recent history of you had Chase and, and Jefferson. Before them, it was Odell and Evans. But other than that, you're talking a complete goose when it comes to predicting that of uh, – or not just predicting that a, a rookie wide receiver finishes in the top 12. Now, rookie wide receivers, they start to break through towards the end of the season, and they, they absolutely have value. That's why we talk about on this show – letting other people burn the high draft pick on the rookie, and then once, they're, once they've given up on that player in four or five weeks, then scoop them off the waiver wire or go trade low for that player because they get better as the season goes along. Second-round players or wide receivers drafted, 93 of them, Michael Thomas and Quan Bolden. That's it. Those are the two that finish in the top 12. Rookies don't finish in the top 12 and don't let the crowd push up the ADP of whoever the hot rookie is, because there will so be five percent of five percent of first rounders were top twelve quarter yes, uh, wide receivers since two thousand two, and two point six percent of second rounders were top twelve. Yes, like they just they don't pan out to be elite, and so that's I'm bringing that up. We we all know that rookie wide receivers generally don't superstars right away, but because we're coming off of back to back years, the conversation is going to be. Who is this year's Jamar Chase? Who is this year's Justin Jefferson? It, I guarantee it will be asked. It will probably be asked on this podcast. Oh, like, yeah. Like we are, we're we're going to be. And Jason, is he's in. We'll be guilty of Never. that. But just take something for the rookie fever and, and hold your water when it comes to the draft. Take them at the right time, but don't over... Don't overspend that draft capital, that opportunity cost, because the Jamar Chases and Justin Jeffersons 
that they are the outlier. I think the story more often than not is the Devontae Smith type of rookie season for a successful rookie Which was good. wide receiver season. Or you get the Amon Ross St. Brown little blitz yeah. at the end of the season. So it's not generally like Jamar Chase was dominant from the from the beginning of the year. Even Jeff Jefferson's season took a little time to get going, if you took remember. A couple, it took like a couple three weeks, weeks yeah. maybe. So um it is a good reminder. It's one that I think will be disregarded. Mm -hmm. But so nice try. I just, I'm tr I'm also trying to talk to myself because, like, the reason Jamar Chase was a fifth or the sixth rounder in ADP, I can't remember which one it was. Fifth, fifth, was because of Justin Jefferson. If the Jefferson season hadn't happened, Jamar Chase still would have been sought after in the draft, but it would have been uh, eighth round, ninth round, like that, because Jefferson was a double digit pick. When they when you have the success of the outliers, it stacks upon uh, itself, and I'm just afraid that a a rookie wide receiver a, a wide receiver will be drafted very high in in the NFL draft. It will just happen, and people might lose their minds of like, look at the draft capital of this player, and I love his athleticism. Just realize that at least you're percentage gonna, wise, it hasn't happened. You're going to burn yeah. a huge opportunity cost. We we saw this after 2014. In 2014. Yes massive rookie draft class that was Odell Beckham and that was the Calvin Benjamin Mike Evans, Evans just uh, unbelievable uh, like you said that there's there's only been four of those first round guys who have who have hit as a top 12 rookie wide receiver since that time that is six of 170 players that have actually hit there so yeah don't don't bet don't bet that way number one all right we'll call it the future is bright for number one, which is our yearly reminder to improve your fantasy football experience, fix your league, improve all of the aspects that you may have, you know, you may have hated during the first three or four weeks of the year and you forgot that you want to change these things in the off season. And there's a laundry list of things you could be doing right now, starting with one of our pet peeves, mm -hmm. the great built-in trade veto system on a lot of platforms get rid of trade vetoes immediate trades yes. when someone makes a trade boom it's done if there is a huge problem you can always reverse a trade but that should be almost never i mean when in our league have we ever reversed trade since we got rid of the trade veto process and we went to instant trades it has never, never happened. We've never gone backwards, yeah. and it's never been a problem, and it allows so much more activity. Yeah, because you're no longer factoring, you know, in a league with a one- or two-day window, a trade processing window. And that Thursday night game yeah. screws you over. All of a sudden, you, you're lowering transactions in your league, which lowers activity, fun, all of those things. So you want to get rid of that. And look, you have a responsible league with good players. Mm. You should only be vetoing a trade on collusions grounds anyway. That's another good tip. The players in your league. Make sure that you've got a good group of uh, people. If you need to replace some of the fantasy managers, do it now. Yeah, and if that if you can't find replacements, it's better to play with eight or ten than twelve team league where you have two or three guys ruining the league due to inactivity. So make adjustments. Get people that are committed. Maybe this is the off season you want to change to fab waiver system. Yes, it, it is. Maybe this is the off season where you want to fix your championship week so that it is not the final week of the NFL season when it is a crapshoot who will be playing and who won't be playing. Make that fix this off season. Maybe you have kickers in your league, <laughs> <laughs> and you should fix that and replace yeah. uh, your kickers with a flex position. Uh, another couple recommendations we always make for making leagues a little bit better. Maybe this is the off season you build out the communication platform for your league. Maybe you want everybody on Slack. Maybe you want them all on Discord. Maybe you want them all on a uh, some other platform. But put yourself in a position where people can be talking to each other all year long. Maybe this is the league where you need a new – this is the offseason you need a new commish to bring a little extra energy to your league. Yeah, someone that's going to make some hype videos and send them around, get that league, get get the juices flowing. That's what I wanted to say. Of I, if you're, We get a lot of the questions of how do I get – how do I spice it up for my league? I want more communication, and you have to be the instrument of change. Mm -hmm. You have to – it might take a lot of energy. You might be like, oh, I'm going to make this really funny, cool video for my league, and it might get no traction. Your friends may be – they may remain silent, but you got to have the, 
you gotta have the energy friends (laughs) yeah but i'm saying you might you might need the energy to put that out there a few times before it gets other people in the competitive spirit of oh okay okay this is what we're doing now fine here's my video so the future is bright and if you need another league or you need to find a league with good people the foot clan is available uh, if you're a, a member over at jointhefoot.com, you get access to Foot Clan leagues, and you can find a local, online, dynasty, redraft, keeper, whatever you need. So you can check that out as well. That will do it. That is the finished countdown. Too many food-related titles. I, I'll fix that for See, next that's year. that's on you. That's my fault. I should have known my co-hosts. <laughs> mm-hmm. But that'll do it. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll have a Coaching Changes show next Thursday, so we'll be recapping some of those changes and a whole lot more this offseason. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.